Hi guys, it's Mamie. I have a book chat video for you today. Here are five books that I have read recently that I have not discussed with you. The first one is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah Mass. This was our book club choice for, I think, December. A girl in our book club loves this genre, so she chose this book. Um, it's not my usual book of choice or genre of choice being young adult fantasy or sci-fi, but I read it anyways because it was my book club and we are expected to read all the books chosen by each member. So um, this book was basically a telling of Beauty and the Beast with a twist of suspense, lust, and gore. It, um, it kept my attention just fine. But I will admit that I had some eye-rolling experiences <laughs> reading it. There was one line that this author kept saying, and I can't remember it verbatim, but it was something like this. She kept saying, I could see his muscled chest through his bloodied tunic. And she said it repeatedly in one chapter, and I just kept rolling my eyes, and I was laughing to myself saying, oh my goodness. But anyways... This is a young adult book. It's expected to be like that, right? Isn't it? With, uh, I don't know. Anyways, um, what else about this book? I mean, it was a little bit gory for my liking. I don't really care to see. I don't mind violence and some blood in books, but this was a little excessive for my liking. But with that being said, I'm glad I read it. I like being able to relate to people who this is their favorite genre of books, so... It was a fun discussion, and hearing her passion for this genre is um, infectious, or contagious, I should say. And um, it was fun, but I, I gave it two stars. That's what I can give it. Okay, then my next book is As Bright as Heaven by Susan Meisner. This was my January Book of the Month Club choice that I picked um, in that membership. I love that Club. If you guys haven't heard of it, it's called Book of the Month Club, and it's so much fun. Anyways, to get back to this, um, this is a story, it's historical fiction, which is my absolute favorite genre of book to read. Um, this follows the, the Bright family, their last name is Bright. Um, it follows them through a tragic loss, um, 1918 Philadelphia. It's set mainly in Philadelphia. It starts out where they're in a more rural area and they're tobacco farmers. But um, Thomas Bright, his uncle, who lives in Philly, sends, um, well actually he, he asks them to come to take over the funeral business that he has had for many, many years. And the uncle not having children of his own, Thomas would be heir to the business. So. Because of the tragic loss that they endured, Thomas and Pauline, the parents, the main characters in the, in the family, accepted his offer to relocate to Philly. So they moved their three daughters to Philly to take over the business. Now, this book relives the Spanish flu pandemic, which, you know was so, it was so much bigger than I ever thought. I mean, I've heard of it plenty of times, but I didn't know the devastation that it brought. I didn't know it was so huge, but it, it ruined so many families. But So it has that in it. It also has World War I in it and Prohibition. So it's very interesting. I loved this book. I thought it was so good. Each chapter is, um, it's, it's from the perspective of each of the female characters. Now, the mother, her name is Pauline. There are three daughters. Um, the oldest was Evelyn. I believe she was 15 when the book starts. Then there's Maggie, who was 12, and Willa, who was 6. So each chapter starts with the name of the girl, who it, it, that chapter is from their perspective. It was beautifully written. Loved it. Very easy. Flowed beautifully. Um, great storytelling in this book. I highly recommend it. I really, really liked it. I think I gave it a four and a half star uh, rating on Goodreads, but really good book. I really liked it. Actually, as a matter of fact, 
I don't know if this author has other books out there, but I really would like to check them out if she has. Loved it. Okay. Then I read Writing as a Way of Healing, How Telling Story, uh, excuse me, How Telling Our Stories Transforms Our Lives. That's a long title. By Louise DeSalvo. Um, one of my subscribers recommended this book to me a long time ago when I finally finished it. I don't know if she wants me to mention her name, so I'm not going to, but she highly recommended it. So I picked it up. As you know, I'm a big journaler. I have been my entire life, not consistently every day of my life, but since I was a kid, I always liked, you know, to write in my diary when I was little. And as I've grown into an adult, it's just a way to get my thoughts out on paper, and it, it, I find it very healing. So this book is was very good. I really liked it. Um, it's not so much for people who like to just free write. In other words, I think what nowadays what they call it is brain dumping. It's not so much about brain dumping or free writing. She gives you specific exercises and um, uh, like steps to take to actually get the most out of your writing for healing. And it pertains to a lot of people who have gone through some sort of trauma, which who hasn't nowadays, but it's, it's, it's specifically written for healing for people. Um, I really liked it. The first section of the book was a little bit long for me. It seemed long, like it was dragging a little bit. She mentions a lot of famous writers about their diaries and how they wrote to heal their lives, like Edith Wharton is mentioned, Henry Miller is mentioned, Mae Sarton is mentioned, um, Alice Walker is mentioned. That's just a few. She names a bunch of famous writers in here, how their journals or diaries um, helped them heal. Um, but then in the section two and three, she gives a more specific uh, direction as to what to take to heal your life. And it's really, really good. So I gave this book a four-star rating on Goodreads. Um, I highly recommend it. And thank you to my subscriber who recommended it to me. I love reading books about um, journaling. I love reading books about books and uh, bookstores. I think they're just fun and light. But this was very, very um, helpful. And I think it would help many people out there who are struggling from a, a traumatic uh, event that may have taken place in their life or just struggling in any area of your life, I think this book might help you if you get it down on paper. Very, very helpful. Okay. And then I wrote, or read, I wrote, yeah, right. Then I read The Power by Rhonda Byrne. I'm sure you have all heard of The Secret. It was huge back in 2006, I think, 2007 maybe. It was all over the place. It was everywhere. This is kind of a follow-up to that book. It's called The Power. And in all honesty, I liked this book better than The Secret. I just, I listened to it in my car. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm older now and I'm hopefully a little bit wiser. Or maybe I was just more open to this. It um, definitely continues the lesson of the law of attraction and what you put out there, you get back. It, it's just put in different, um, it's put in different scenarios in your life and how love should, is the highest vibration and the more love you put out in the world the more you're going to get it back not just specifically in romantic love just in any kind of love um, but it's really good and I highly recommend it I think it could be life changing for many people I love this kind of stuff it gets me excited to, to just try to be the best me that I could possibly be so I gave this 5 stars I loved it and then last but not least I read Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Now, this was my first John Green book that I have ever read. Um, this was our book club pick for February. Um, so, my goodness, I'm not sure how to really talk about this book because I was so excited to read it because I know John Green is so popular. And the storyline of the book is about a girl, Aza, I think she's 15 or 16, I'm not sure. But she suffers from OCD and anxiety. And it's her struggles of dealing with that. But also there are there were so many subplots to the book. Her best friend wants her to help her find a missing billionaire so they can win the 
$100,000 reward if they find him. So there's so many different avenues that this, this book went, and I thought it was just too much. It wasn't confusing. It wasn't hard. It's, it's a young adult book, so it wasn't difficult reading. It was just, I kept scratching my head going, what, now why did he put that in there? I mean, there's a reptile in here. There's like, I don't know. So I wish he had just stuck with the storyline of Aza with her, her struggles because OCD is, is very oh, tormenting. It's, it's, it's awful and anxiety if you've ever had anxiety I've had anxiety in my life and it is the worst feeling in the world but I loved the introspective part of Aza in the book I liked that part of it and I wish he had just stuck with that storyline instead of going on all these other subplots if that makes any sense I'm not sure if I'm making any sense but anyways I gave this book um, I give it a two and a half, I think, a two and a half star rating. It was okay. I mean, I just wish he had stuck with just more on Aza. But anyways, that's it. Um, so have you guys read any of these books? If you have, I would love to hear your thoughts on them down below in the description. Even if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. Let's have a great discussion about these books. And if you haven't read these books, what are you reading? I love to hear any good books that you've just recently read. That's my favorite book to read. It's a highly recommended book. That's like my favorite thing. So let me know what you're reading. I hope you are well. I hope to be finally get back into filming more of these book chats with you. As of now I'm back to reading more on a routine, more frequently than I was. And I hope everything is good in your life. So take care and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching.